So we'll get the uh, meeting of the select board called to order for Thursday, January 19th. Recording in progress. And um, as Mike is joining us virtually, I'll go ahead um, and lead us through the meeting this evening. And our first order of business is to approve the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda. Second. Moved and second. Any further discussion on today's agenda? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next up is the consent agenda items. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second it. Anything further? Excellent. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fantastic. Thank you. Um, we have some members of the public, it looks like via Zoom and in the audience, so anything that isn't on the agenda, now's the time, um, <laughs> your time to speak, whether virtually or in the room. I'm going to give them a second to... Sorry, I'm admitting two people. Thank you. That's like, I'll, oh yeah, I'll give them a second. Then we need to hear the... Perfect. So for those just joining, we are in the public comment section. So if you have something that you'd like to speak to that is not on today's agenda, now is the time. You can either raise your hand or unmute. Excellent. I think we're all right there. Okay, so we'll move forward to select board items. The first is downstreet housing and the ARPA funding request. I won't bite you on up. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Just want me to stand here. You can sit. Yeah. Perfect. You don't have to be too. Uh, Awesome. So good evening, everyone. Nice to see everyone again. So to introduce myself, I'm Nicola Anderson. I'm the Director of Real Estate Development for Downstreet Housing and Community Development. Um, I'm here with a request for $100,000 um, from the Town of Waterbury and ARPA funding for our project. I did provide a memo and a budget of where we're at right now with the project, but I just kind of wanted to provide a little bit more of an update um, too. I think a project update would be really helpful. Um, since the public hearing and vote that we had in October, we truly have been full steam ahead in this project, which is really exciting. Um, and at this time, we are preparing to submit our first funding application February 4th, and then our second one is February 13th. Um, those are two largest funding applications where we're hoping to secure most of our funding. That's our tax credit, which is from VHFA and our VHCB, Vermont Housing Conservation Board funding. Um, you know, we, so we are, we're finalizing our design at this time, and then we are working to get an actual construction cost estimate by the end of the month. So the budget that I've submitted is not our final budget that we'll be submitting our applications with. There could be a larger gap. Right now we've kind of done a 300,000 per square foot construction cost. And we are seeing prices come in over uh, sorry, 400 per square foot construction cost, and we are seeing like, so we're seeing 400 per square feet, but we put 300 per square feet in our budget. Um, but part of the funding applications too is that they have um, one of their questions, and something that strengthens our application is actually receiving like financial support from the town in regards to their ARPA funding. They do ask that we go to the communities that, we're provide, that we are developing in and ask for ARPA dollars. And if we do receive ARPA dollars, it just strengthens our applications. Um, and I think it's just with this part, um, you know, the funders are looking to see that the communities are understanding that housing need as well and that how this pro the, the projects will be benefiting the, the communities that we're developing in. Um, the, so a little bit about the project, we have, it is going to be 26 units. We did do a lot of outreach regarding a possible commercial space, and we designed it that way. We've not heard any feedback. We've not had any interest whatsoever. So we have to take, we can't plan for that moving forward, so we're taking that commercial space out 
However, we're creating a workable office space in there that service providers for the community will be able to use that space um, as well. They're working with residents in our, all of our buildings in the community. Um, so it is like where it's not going to be a unit right there, but in a way that they're still giving back to the residents that we're serving. As, so so you're not reducing it from the footprint of the project? No, it's the same, it's just about the just, same footprint. And would you rent it to somebody from a commercial aspect if somebody was interested down the road later? I don't. I think that we're working on getting a service plan with different service agencies to be using that office space. So as long as we have an MOU for services, for instance, so we're really the, the key that we're working for is workforce housing. So we've actually partnering, partnering with HireAbility, um, um, which is a statewide agency that provides different resources um, for different employment opportunities like classes. I'm sitting down with residents um, to talk them through, like helping them fill out applications. So we were creating this MOU for services for that space to be able to use for meetings like that. So if those services stop in the future, which I don't really foresee happening, that's definitely an option. But at this time, um, I don't see like another commercial tenant using that space. Would those services be for residents only, or would they be a um, scenario in which they would be open to other members of the community as well? I, there could be opportunity. I know, like, I think that higher ability does work mm -hmm. with outside residents, so I do foresee them using that space to work with other people as well that they're serving. Yeah. And would you just provide that space, or do we have to pay for it? We're, so we're actually providing that. They're going to be, the service providers are going to be, um, paying like utility costs with, through their MOU for services, but we are, um, in order to be providing the services that we think the residents need, we're providing that as a meeting space. And is there any um, further uh, input from the community on the design? I know, I mean, it was fairly contentious, uh, particularly during the, early, the first meeting, about you know the size of the footprint uh, and uh, proximity to the dumpster and all those good things. Uh, you yeah, so we, I mean, we're still finalizing that design right now mm -hmm. for what we're getting a cost estimate on. I think that once we are at more of a final design, we do intend to hold like a public hearing. Okay. We definitely are going to have the opportunity during permitting, but we want to share that information before we get to the permitting stage as well. We got a hand raised. Oh, thank you. I don't know if I've got to unmute that person. Um, yeah, oh, it's Mike. <laughs> That's, that's me. Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, just, just, just in full disclosure, I used to be a, a program director at USDA Rural Development and a former board member for, well, it back then was Central Vermont Community Land Trust, now downstream. Um, I'm just curious, with that $100,000 number, you know, most of your money for housing projects like this are raised via tax credits. Hundred thousand dollars is in the scheme of things is not a lot of money. Does all does the town's hundred thousand dollars make some difference with your uh, housing credit application? So no, I I agree. Like a hundred thousand dollars in a twelve point five million dollar project is not a lot, but I don't want to come here and ask for like a third of the budget. You know that like that's I'm trying to what my I really wanted to ask for a realistic ask from the town. Um, regarding so truthfully, it does actually make a huge impact because we're at a point where. Um, we we can only the project and the operating budget can only handle a certain amount of debt. Um, so, like we something that we are also going to do is you, to ask you the utility district for a UDAG loan as well because that is a lower interest loan from other opportunities that we would um, that right. we would have because the the debt that the project can handle like truly it's it can only handle a hundred thousand dollars in debt. So at this time, the way that the like even this budget that I provided, I think it says that the debt is 186,000. That's still too much debt right now. Um, so we are there's other options like we could go to and apply for 
um, CDBG funding that also flows through the town. Um, but that funding is extremely competitive as well and pushes out the schedule. But that's kind of a backup plan for us to ask for if we need additional funding as we look at our cost estimate. But this, sure, but this 100000 just saying it does actually really help us because it means that we are taking on less debt for the project and the project can only handle a certain amount of debt. So I know you are looking for, uh, you know, we have heard all kinds of numbers. We've heard of significantly higher amounts. And I know that kind of can probably concern at least some members of the board. But what I guess that is kind of a fixed number that you're not going to come back and ask the municipality for more. And there, you know, because there are other ways, as you've said, that additional funds can be raised, you know, you know, I, you know, we want to do our part. You know, we have said in our long-term municipal plan that house, affordable housing is a real importance. So it's not like it, it's going on deaf ears, but, you know, like everything, you know, we have a municipal budget that's, you know, we have to keep rates down for municipal players and everyone sees ARPA funds as being, you know, and everyone wants to dip into that big pot of ARPA funds. And, you know, we would like to see a lot of good projects. And, you know, just if, if we have some reasonable assurance that that's going to be the amount that uh, you, you're going to be asking for, I'd be much more um, looking for, looking that I can vote affirmatively for that. Thanks. Yeah, we definitely wouldn't come back and ask for more. Like we would take, you know, any, any receiving support from the town of Waterbury is really important to us. And receiving that financial support through the ARPA funds is what I'm here for today. And that's our budget we can make happen with 100,000. Um, you know, if there is opportunity for more, our budget would appreciate it, you know, as we are con honestly very concerned about the construction prices, uh, you know, it's just, it's scary. Like this, this project budget in 2020 developing early 2020 would have been like 8.7 million and now it's 12.5 yeah. and our fund, we've spent that like through the state, those additional housing dollars have been spent. So we're back to our pre-COVID budget for housing development. It's really competitive for us to be able to move a project forward. We do feel like we have a really strong project. You know, everyone is really excited in the state about this project, but um, the opportunity for like 200,000, yes, but I would be super grateful just to receive that 100,000 as well. Mm -hmm. um, a couple questions if I may. Yeah. The first is, assume for a minute that this is approved by the board and approved by the voters. When would you seek the funds? So we would be closing, I would say, we think if all lines up, if things go perfectly, I hope to close um, like November 2023. So when, when I say close, that's our financial closing. So ideally we would like to requisition those funds then, if that's not feasible, with the way thing, we can push that, we can requisition it later in the project, but right now the timeline for us, if funding um, decisions line up, like our board, the applications are due February, the board meetings are April, May, possibly another one in the summer, depending, um, it would be a closing in November, breaking ground, horrible time of the year for that, but <laughs> early 2023. You say closing? 24. 2024, yes. Closing that financial closing, which is then as uh, starts our construction. I'm sorry, bringing ground when? Um, in the early winter, the winter, <laughs> yeah. We, we have regulations with funders on how quickly you have to start construction after you receive funds, after you close. Mm -hmm. And truthfully, even like winter conditions prices don't affect project budgets as much as you would think at this time, mm -hmm. interestingly. Yeah. So that's a Can you do the, the site work with uh, frozen ground? Yeah. Doesn't freeze still February anymore, anyway. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> <laughs> question, Sorry, question for the board to consider, not answer to consider, is um, 
if you're comfortable with the closing and paying the funds to closing, um, which I think actually sounds quite reasonable, um, but I think whether it's somehow phrased in the warning or whether it's a separate MOU, we should make that clear. Mm -hmm. um, just in the event that the closing is delayed. The closing is delayed. We don't want to. I don't think the board wants to pay. The town wants to pay for things like soft costs, and then if the project is delayed, have it said Happen, which I don't see happening. But so I think closing is a good benchmark. Yeah, when we close, like that is all of our ducks in a row. Like that mm -hmm. is like we've got the construction contract. Everything is signed, and we like we we've gone out to bid, gotten the pricing that that construction <laughs> contract, and we have a start date set. Yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes ducks get out of line yeah. uh, along the way, yeah. which is to this um, point. So, Nicola, when you say closing, are you talking about paying the village at that time too, in November, or is that beforehand? Paying the Eve. You dog. Yeah. You dog. Sorry. <laughs> Cash flow goes the other way. Um, yes, like no, that's no, when no. we would do that too, like the full acquisition. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, I have a question as well. So we, as a board, have talked about we have made some funding allocations with ARPA, but wanted to let the voters be much more involved in approving things. So. You know, we as a board might decide in advance of town meeting to say we want this on, you know, the ballot, but but the voters have vote, won't vote until, of course, town meeting. So would that still help strengthen your applications, knowing they're due in February, even if it's not necessarily a done deal? Mm -hmm. Like, is that? Yeah, our board meetings, the first one is in April. Mm -hmm. So that's after town meeting day. Mm -hmm. So then that, that helps. I can... You know, we through applications like applications. I'm going to put this hundred thousand dollars in the in the budget, but it's just unclear. And I will like put the date of knowing town meeting day. Yeah, I think it does strengthen knowing that I've come and met with the town. You know, we're doing that, um, but we will at least have that decision by the board meeting, which will be helpful. Mm -hmm. Uh, typical unit square foot right or uh, square foot size yeah so we're gonna have studio we're gonna have like five I should have brought this there's five studios like 17 one bedrooms and then the rest are two bedrooms um, the studios so the one bedrooms are about like 750 square feet the um, studios are definitely less than that in the 600s and then the one bedrooms about 950 square feet Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. Yeah. Or two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. So, let's see, seventeen plus. I think it's four, or five, four or five two bedrooms. Because here it says before residential development cost per unit is around four hundred eighty thousand. Four hundred eighty. Yeah. So then that's the, is that square feet or unit price? Sorry, per unit price. Yeah. Yeah. Per unit price. Yeah. So that's. That's still that's pretty low. More than. Square. It's closer to five hundred dollars a square foot. Perry, or that more. So four five nine. Four five nine. Next one down. So the per unit. Okay, so this so square footage we put four fifty nine. So that's actually sorry. <clears throat> I thought we had kept this at three hundred. So this is actually a little bit more realistic. I will say I just got construction cost pricing on another project. And the per unit cost was five hundred and thirty thousand, which is just unbelievable. But I no, I actually feel more comfortable with these budgets about the like construction price, like not being we still we don't know what's gonna happen, but I do know it's very common when prices go up, rarely do they come down. Um, but I think this is you know, we've really tried to buffer in our budget as much as possible to plan for this construction. Uh, for a construction estimate and be prepared that we're asking for as much as we do need to ask. I mean, this is flashbacks of the fire station issue for me. Uh, I've been in the building trades my entire working career, mm -hmm. self-employed. Uh, and back then, uh, almost $6 million budget. Uh, fortunately, it was overturned by the voters in a, in a uh, rescind vote. 
uh, and we were able to get the two projects done. Um, you know, I've said it before, and I'll continue to say it, that when it comes to taxpayers' dollars, it's a free-for-all when it comes to pricing. Uh, I know pricing is, is somewhat high now. Uh, <clears throat> I just had a gentleman build a uh, garage with an apartment over the top. Um, energy efficient in every sense. Um, I forget the size, 30 by 32, something like that. That was half a million dollars. Uh, we're talking, you know, each one of these units being close to that, it seems a little excessive. I know there are other uh, issues in play here, uh, meeting code and fire hazard and whatnot. My, so one of my questions is to the board, uh, how would this have gone if there were no ARPA funds? Uh, along with so many other people that have come to the table for ARPA funds. And I've expressed my uh, concern before that by the time the town gets around to use these ARPA funds, for the entire municipality, um, there won't be much left. Much left. So um, I'm sure the board's cognizant of that um, in this discussion. And uh, you know, we got two state representatives here in Waterbury. Is there something that they can do to help assist this project? from the state level as opposed to pulling ARPA funds again. Uh, so I will just say, you know, the, the, the VHCB ask, that's state funding. So okay. that's allocation from state, um, from the, that's Vermont Housing Conservation. So the state allocation of funds, and I don't know if you've been following at the state, but usually um, you can see that that's a huge ask for VHCB. Mm -hmm. But um, usually the yearly allocation from them for, for housing development is about 30 to 40 million. We as a statewide, statewide all housing developers have come together and got and are, it's been in the news about the presenting that we're gonna be doing for the state budget is to ask for the full allocation of the need for what we're trying to develop this year, which is $179 million. Like that's where, so for all of the projects, everything that's trying to get developed, for the VHCB allocation in each project around the state in order to fund all the projects that are coming that, that, we have, that we have developed, that we are planning to develop, we need $179 million this year to award every single project. So usually, so think about, usually it's 40 million, and that then 25% of that is taken to conservation. So that's 30 million that is allocated to housing projects in a year. So we, they are, I mean, Tom Stevens, thank goodness, was nominated again to the housing committee at the state. So he is allocating for housing, especially for Waterbury. We're so lucky that he lives in the town of Waterbury. But that $100,000 that we could possibly get, $100,000 will then make sure that this project can operate in a positive, you know, that we, um, can afford the maintenance, afford, the, the, it's all the operating budget, um, operate well. Also, the need that Waterbury has said each year, especially now, is we know we need the housing units, right? Like Waterbury, there's a 1.5 vacancy rate, I think, or less. Um, that workforce housing, that's what we've really committed to. We're bringing in services to help with that workforce housing if needed to make sure that we've got people that are either looking for jobs or those resources to help with their taxes, things like that. Um, I, I totally get it. I mean, I understand. I can't imagine how many asks that you're getting in ARPA, because I know that everyone, you know, any grants, anyone's going out there. But um, it is really, this is really important to us, too. And I don't see um, us, like, we, we are maxing out the ask from Vermont Housing Conservation from our tax credits 
already in this project. So if we don't get that, then we have to start cutting things from our budget too. So that might mean that we have a less durable something in there, less energy efficient something, but we can't because we have to develop to these standards too. Well, the problem for me is that the town, you know, I've been on the board 10 years now, and uh, when I got on the board originally, the town was woefully behind on infrastructure pro mm -hmm. pro uh, projects back then, and, and yeah. you know, we're gaining ground slowly, but we're still woefully behind. Uh, yeah. And the more of this money we give up to, you know, new projects uh, is going to just take away from our ability to get caught up on simply what we should be responsible for now that we've yeah. already got in our lap, uh, let alone just, you know, excluding taking on anything new. Uh, and it's our one, probably our one chance at this point, uh, unless there's some, some of this uh, build back better plan money coming uh, down the road. I, I disagree with all of it. In fact, if I had my druthers, I'd, use that money to pay off the national debt because all they're doing is, is drowning us all. But that conversation uh, is for another time and probably another place. But uh, anyway, that's my two cents. Um, do you know b before ARPA, did they ask on applications if the town had financially contributed? No. So I guess, and that's, yeah. I take your point really seriously, Chris, which is if this wasn't ARPA funding, would be, we'd be having this conversation yeah. because using the Bill Shepelek, a penny on the tax rate is 70,000. I would not propose a 1.3% tax increase to give downstreet $100,000. Personally, I would not support that proposal. I think somewhat akin to the conversation we had around WASI and the new building, you know, it is this gift. I was awkwardly gesturing at Tom, if anyone saw, because I made the point you just said to ARPA and that I've made from the beginning, which is a little ARPA here, a little ARPA here, and the ARPA is gone. Um, and so Tom sent a spreadsheet. This hasn't been sent to the whole board, but we can pass around. Tom, is this okay? <laughs> and it's public, but just walking through like what we've already spent, you know, that we already outlined, Ice Center, blah, blah, blah. And there is a balance. I mean, this, and this was including his full proposal for town bridges that we're talking later. This was every request we've had, plus some other yeah. things with reappraisal. So it, it's a ballpark number, like who plus knows? Plus the board is meeting tomorrow. Plus the EFA board. Is so I, I'm not discounting a request. I guess my questions, I think it is, my bottom line is I think it is really important we as a town show support for the project. I think we don't always have tangible projects, particularly in housing. So the fact that we can take a dollar and move it directly into a project to me is a positive. Um, this also I want to give Tom credit but for, but like for example, we did allocate ARPA funding to CV Fiber. That was particularly tied to um, serving the community and being used for like specific costs to connect folks in Waterbury. Um, I recognize and appreciate that $100,000 is a pretty number and I would personally like reasonable starting number for us. Is there a way to tie it to some component of the project costs as opposed to just it being like a line in the budget? I recognize that's not totally right for this project. I'm just yeah. saying I don't know how you structure like We've had some numbers that are just kind of like yeah. out of the air, and I just didn't, knowing that you develop these types of projects, is there a cost that sometimes feels like? I, I mean, we can restrict it to actual construction costs. Like if that, instead of it being like a soft cost that's paying for like, you know, the architect and engineering fees, you know, which are $350,000. But that, I think that we can definitely do that to restrict it to the actual construction. <laughs> Be clear. I'm not suggesting that we need to see specific invoices, but the closing is a good milestone. Another milestone is just a shovel in the ground, mm -hmm. a physical shovel in the ground. That could be the point at which a check is issued. Mm -hmm. At that point, it's going. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like that's like I don't. I agree with that. I think we'd want people. We, I mean, obviously, paperwork and legality had to do that, but we want to put restrictions in that way. I think that's totally fair. That might also be good for the voters to see exactly what they're, what the dollars are doing. Yes. Yeah. For specifically for something like and, construction. Well, can it just be like construction costs or like yeah. constructing like you know instead of it being like oh like putting in like foundation or so, I mean I can allocate it to say work, but 
No, I just didn't know it was more like if you were like, and again, I personally don't feel that strong about it, but I wanted to raise it because I thought it was an interesting point just around like, oh, well, we know that the water sewer connection portion is going to be 76,000 yeah. to me. We, you know, we, we, we could have a conversation I mean, about like, oh, is that? With, oh, when that. we have our construction cost, obviously we do. Um, and so we can definitely do something like that to be creative as well. Like about like, especially with something, that's it, like utilities connecting to the town. If we think that like that's going to be stronger or something for the town to understand that something more unique in that way, we could allocate it in that way too. Totally. I mean, personally, I think it's really important that we support at a minimum, I mean, if they're asking the question, I would say at a minimum, like we should give them 10 or 20. I think it's really important that we as a board, I think, I mean, we supported when Skip came here and said, do you support the sale of 51 South Main Street? We did all agree with that. And so if then there's a question of, if the town supports that, I think putting some money where our mouth is, being that it's ARPA money, is really important. I think we as a board can have a discussion, you know, personally, if that is around like number. And Danny also raised this point that I think is interesting about having it as a question, because that's also a precedent you all set before I was on the board with the ICE Center and others. And when I, when you asked, um, was it a question before about the c communities supporting financially? No, but communities have, and it's made it a much stronger application. So like for instance, our French block project in Montpelier, where it was the first floor is Aubuchon hardware and it was two floors vacant, the city of Montpelier gave us $400,000 from their housing fund. So, and that was huge. And you know, like our funders at that time were very, were a little bit wary in the project and that was huge in that support as well. But I also, I totally understand your concerns infrastructure, like believe me, and that's a conversation that I've been going to with every community. I was at Barry at City asking for them for money too, and there was, they had 18 uh, community asks at this public hearing, 18. And, you know, after everyone presented their idea, all the community said, we need infrastructure. Luckily, uh, we were funded as well at that because I think it was and really I think we were one of the only projects that were funded other than the infrastructure just meeting that housing need as well and not to compare apples to apples I'm fairly sure Barry City allocated 250,000 mm -hmm. to nine units yeah they did and so just mm -hmm. in terms of also unit being per buck um, 26 yeah. is pretty significant Oh, yeah, um, I, I also recognize Chris's concern, um, and uh, I am prepared to support a much larger uh, allocation for infrastructural projects uh, that need attention now. Um, uh, but uh, in this case, I, I think uh, we've had people come before us uh, indicating that there is no worker housing available in, in Waterbury. People can't find lodging here to, to work in our restaurants and to, you know some of the lower paying uh, jobs here um, and I think a uh, hundred thousand dollars is a relatively small uh, contribution to a 12 million dollar effort uh, and so I'm going to support this you said you said you keep talking about workforce housing, and I think it, at the last public meeting you said that there's no requirement to be workforce housing. Is that not the case? So it's there's not like workforce housing in regards to the incomes that we're serving, you know. So it's not market rate units. So these units are not going to be. It's not going to be fifteen hundred dollars for a one bedroom unit. So they people with the area medium income is restrictive for how much they make in the community. So truthfully, in the numbers that we presented, like people that work in the restaurants can afford and like teacher, if it says teacher and a child, they'll be able to live in our you have to you can only make a certain amount of money to live in the unit. Well, I guess my question more is so is is it one of the qualifications that you actually are holding a job? No, we can't do that. Fair housing regu regulations uh, take that away. But we, with with our, we have to, so we have to have like service providers in our units, and we have to. So twenty five percent of our units have to be our lower income, and with that, we have service partners. 
So we're working with agencies to locate people that, for our low income units, for people that do actually, so for instance, we have someone that works in Waterbury that lives in Middlesex in their car that we already, there's working with a service provider that has been trying to get into an apartment, would love to work, live where they work. And so that's, with their salary, they could live in one of our units. But, so what we've been doing is working with, our plan is to work with service providers to be more pointed as to the people that we do accept. So we can't say you're required to have a job, but we can say you have to be working with these service providers who are then looking for this type of population to be living in the housing as well. Okay, my comment is, I'm going out on a limb here, is there any benefit or consideration that EFUD might just donate the land and allow us the 100000 to stay in ARPA and use it for something else? So, I believe on an earlier call down the street, asked that question. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think you were on, that, on, on the call, but um, I suppose EFUD could donate the land, but we actually talked about it with respect to a loan, and Bill made the point, rather than paying for the property, would it help advance the project if, if the purchase price, about 140000 as I recall, was just a mortgage? And they said it couldn't be, that they had to, had to buy it, and now they could buy it at a reduced price. So yes. Yeah. And I think the I village. Would, could we voted on it to buy it at that <laughs> price? So I just, yeah. like, the, yeah, the, the, the village voted to, to sell it. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and I think there was, I think it was even more that people were concerned about the idea of donating. Like, and that's what I think we were concerned about how that would come across as well as the idea of donating it. So we said, like, paying for it, agreeing to it like that. Like I said, I was going out. No, I know. I was going out. Yeah. 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 Keep, keep, keep song. <laughs> it's not a great idea. Well, why should only the people who live in, only live in the yeah, so, I knew you were going to say that. My, so my, my, my comment to that is the $100,000 would go towards infrastructure that benefits everybody in the town, not just mm -hmm. EFUD. So. Yeah. The and, and Chris, I guess that's what so I'm just thinking. think about 26 people working in the community will benefit the town too. The other point, Chris, so EFUD is meeting tomorrow at 11. Um, and they're meeting because they asked us to calculate um, their rate reductions during COVID and how much lost revenue that was to EFUD. Mm -hmm. And that's public information. That's about 310,000. So the purpose of tomorrow's meeting is to ask how much of that, if any, should EFUD approach a select board for, for our funds, for reimbursement. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we got another limb to go out on now. <laughs> I'll just cut the tree down and get it over with. <clears throat> Other so. questions for Nicola? I feel like we, is there, yeah. I mean, it sounds like 100,000 that you picked. I don't want to say intentionally and arbitrarily because that's not the message. Like, I understand yeah, no. you were trying to be really respectful, which I yes, really appreciate yeah. about what was both a piece of your project and felt like a reasonable ask. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any questions. So I'll move to appropriate, or is that going to go on the warrant for the town meeting? That's a question for you, and I think that's a question I'm also going to get to pretty soon, but yeah. would that be? Embedded in your budget or separately warned? Yes, I would think it sounds like, from what I'm hearing, separately warned. Yeah, and I mean, the question would, would essentially would, say to appropriate $100,000 when construction begins. You warned the $600,000 for EFOD for 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 that they ended up not taking. Well, that was actually in the budget. I'm sorry. That was I know. I'm sorry. $100,000 for the ice center was born. Yes. The money that you talked about with WASI, as I understand it, that's warm. Really so warm. it seems like this That should was be. budgeted, I think. I think the difference was CB5. Didn't we put the WASI? CB5 was, so, we already paid that. No, I know. Sorry, but I meant for WASI, we, we put that in the budget. Or did, did it? am I misunderstanding? I, I guess mean, we haven't made that. Is nothing's finalized, right? I don't yeah. believe, I think if you look back at the minutes, yeah. 
you told Wasi that you were pending. Yeah, you would that was our town. Um, Mike, you have your hand up. Yes, um, just a procedural question for Tom. Uh, I prob I was a board member for um, Down Street, and I am a contributor, so I should probably abstain from voting. You were a board member. Yes, I was. If you remember, number of years ago. Down Street. <laughs> if that's what you feel most comfortable doing, Mike, that's fine. I think I so. feel I feel just more transparent to abstain from voting. That's fine. Um, someone else has their hand up on Zoom. If you could let us know who you are. CG. Oh. Good evening. This is Cheryl Bloor. Um, I'm a resident of Waterbury, so thank you for letting me speak at the meeting. Uh, my concern really is really about the fund leaving the town of Waterbury. Um, I know Down Street's doing a really good stuff, um, you know, with their housing projects. Um, but I am concerned that, uh, you know, uh, a private business and a developer that is located in the city of Barrie um, is asking for funds that are really designated, federally designated, uh, for the town of Waterbury for our infrastructure. Um, which we've all been discussing tonight. We have had issues for quite a long time. We have a lot of projects, you know, bridges, sidewalks, roads. We have, I think, $100,000 could go pretty far in marking the lines of the new pavement. Um, I guess my concern is, is, you know, once we lose that money, it's gone. Uh, Downstreet has many other avenues to get money as has been discussed tonight. But once those ARPA funds are gone for the town of Waterbury, that's it. We don't have a lot of other avenues except for uh, taxpayer money to, to um, build up that, that budget again for the infrastructure. My other concern is um, if this was going to be voted on tonight or if you are going to bring this to town meeting, I couldn't quite get the vibe on whether this is going to be a town meeting vote or not. Um, so I, I, would ask, I would ask that we would deny the request only because I would rather have that be used for the um, infrastructure that we've all been trying to, to fix within uh, the village and Waterbury Center as a whole. Um, but if we're not going to at least that give the, all the voters of the village um, a vote in, at town meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So a couple of notes. Um, we, it will go to the voters. We will... Well, our vote tonight will be to whether to put it on the ballot or not. So it will go to the voters and it will either be in the budget or as a separate um, item, but we will decide that um, in the, uh, shortly. Uh, and just a clarification that the, the money would go directly to the project in Waterbury. So I'm not sure if that was unclear, but it's for the housing here on Main Street um, and would be directly for the construction of housing for Waterbury residents. So I just wanted to clear that up for you. I also just wanted to clear up that Down Street's not a private developer. We're actually the local nonprofit developer that's uh, for, the, for the town of Waterbury. We also have three other buildings we operate in Waterbury. Yes, our office is in Barrie. We serve central Vermont. No, I understand that. I was just, what I was alluding to is, is perhaps asking the city of Barry where your business is located. Um, and I say business because I know you must pay salaries. I, I'm pretty sure not everybody works for free. So I know that your location, your business is, is in Barry. And I wasn't sure if you would have already talked to them about funding for, for um, your nonprofit. Barry did, we've developed, so we're developing a housing project in Barry, and Barry has, Barry City allocated funding for that project in Barry. But the expectation would be is that we would come to the local community that we're developing the housing to ask for that ARPA dollars. It wouldn't be where our office is located. Yes, and, and I think to be clear, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, if I, the money that you're talking about here, hundred thousand dollars, while it is paid to Down Street, it doesn't pay your salaries no. or rent or anything. It goes into the project yeah. that is going to be built at Fifty One South Main Street in this town. I mean, don't get me wrong here. One last comment. I, I understand 
I get it. Uh, I understand that the town will benefit in different ways from this project. Um, as to Cheryl's point, you know, once the ARF is gone, that's, that's it. Um, and the infrastructure issue will be back in our lap and, and have to be paid for. It's through taxes, uh, and if the, the costs keep escalating like they like we're all seeing, uh, that's only going to just be worse down the road. So. One, one quick point I, I just want to make is that the funds do come back to us. It's a twelve million dollar building to build, and I know low income housing is not taxed at the full rate, but if it's taxed at a million, it's fifty three hundred dollars a year based on our current tax rate for every million. So if it's taxed at two million bucks, it's that a ten year payback. So it that in government terms, a ten year payback is is not bad. So mm -hmm. it's it is going to grow the grand list. I can't right. I don't have that number for you, but it, it's it's going to be significant. Yeah. Well, I get all we'll grow the right. grand list. Okay, water and Yep. Right. So, um, Chris moved. This motion with one second. Oh, <laughs> can we clarify? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think he. Uh, oh, he did say, yeah, So yeah. the motion is to uh, put on the warrant either through the budget or the warning item at town meeting for voters to vote on hundred thousand dollar allocation for the down street um, project in, in on fifty one South in, in Street uh, to down street housing. So you want to wait to decide to a later meeting whether it's in the budget or on the special or did you second I want to let that a second. Yeah I think we want to talk about that another time. And, and just so people are aware, Monday's meeting, we should be completely through the budget, including all the special articles. And so the goal by the end of Monday is to have not the warning written, but I can take after that meeting, go back and work with work with Aaron and get the warning out to very quickly after that. So you could meet on the 30th, but it would be hopefully to just approve the warning. Yeah. That's if it goes according yeah, to is plan. Is there any reason the board would decide that tonight? Whether it's in the warning or the budget? Yeah. I don't think so. What do you think so? You could decide it tonight, but you'll need to decide it pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Maybe if we can take a look at some of the other uh, other funding uh, activities uh, that we yeah. want to fund in the next uh, the budget year. Yeah. And then see what that looks like. And then maybe this is general how um, kind that of is going to be set up in the budget. Okay, I'll second what you We're going to continue our second it since all of that further discussion should have happened after a second, which okay. is what I was trying to facilitate. Um, so we have a motion, a second. It was not just you, Chris. <laughs> um, motion, the second. We've had some further discussion. Is there any more? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And Mike, you abstain? I abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for seeing your evidence. And thank you for all our letters of support. We love them. Thank you, definitely. Thanks. All right. Next up, we have property transfer to the ice center of Washington West. And though it's under select board items, Tom, you want to help us? Sure. So at your last meeting, I believe, uh, may have been two meetings ago, um, you accepted the properties that you had transferred to essentially all the parks. Um, this one was was held up um, in reviewing the deed. Skip did his full history review and and needed some extra time. So so at EFA's meeting, Skip tabled this. Uh, they've now approved it. Um, so this will be the final of the EFUD properties to transfer to the town. Uh, Sky Center property. Skip has reviewed it. Uh, he's the de facto attorney emeritus, I think. Um, the legal team has reviewed it. Um, Skip hasn't been in to sign it yet, but that's perfunctory. That'll happen. Um, so you need to accept the deed property. So this is the 40 acres of land, one of which the right center sits upon, right center sits on one acre of this 40 plus one is the parcel. We're recently confident that there's no super fun site on the property. Yeah. 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 Somewhere in the file, there's a uh, right now. 
Tom, uh, just a quick question. I know in the warranty deed it refers to a memorandum. I assume that's all been crafted, but I know I haven't received a copy of that. Um, hang on, what do you? The, the, the warranty deed transfer for forty acres. Yes, that's all recorded already. So I, I didn't provide a copy of that with you, but that was crafted and recorded okay. earlier this year. That was something that you, the two boards agreed on that MOU to start this process. Right. I just would like to see the final copy. And I, I don't know if any of the other board members would too. Thank you. Oh, we already got one. Um, but yeah, Mike, I'm sure you can access that. That'd be good. Right, moving on to managers, I have some questions on my budget. So I believe Rachel was going to be here, but we're a little ahead of schedule. Oh, okay. So I can skip. I'm switch things around. Um, if it's okay, I think an easy one to cover is the fire protection contract. Okay. Um, so this is. This is identical to prior years. It's been in place for some time. Uh, it's a formulaic contract based on a percent of our costs, and then it's adjusted based on uh, our percent of the grand list versus their percent of the grand list. Um, and our assessor actually did an analysis and did a parcel by parcel analysis to make sure that that 76% is correct. Um, so I think it's a fair contract essentially you know, almost 15% of our fire budget is defrayed upon another town um, for a fair service. Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's great. The one, the one thing I want to think about, not for this year, but very long term, and, and I haven't done this yet, is, um, and I've, I've gone back and pulled the contracts for the last five years. Karen, I shouldn't say that. Karen pulled the contracts for the last five years for me. I sent an email. Uh, yeah. um, I want to look forward long term because on a micro level every year our grand list is growing a little faster than theirs which means every year they'll pay a tiny bit in percentage the cost will go up but they'll pay a smaller percentage and so maybe not this year but maybe not next year but maybe in 2025 or 2026 we want to think about a fixed price with an inflator and, and enter into a three or five year agreement if we can. Yeah, way to think of it is every new development on Route 100 reduces this a little bit. Yeah, why, why wouldn't we start a five year contract next year? Uh, maybe we can. Mm -hmm. um, I think for this year it's a fair number. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they've they've seen this, and I believe they intend to approve it too. So we need to approve us to that. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. And if you approve it, you can just, I'll just pass one around, get signatures before you go. I'll move to approve the fire contract, fire protection contract with the town of Duxford. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, this is where I still want to discuss answer, but is there anyone still in mind? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is Rachel here? You made the motion. And unanimous. Um, 
I'm going to give Rachel a few more minutes and leave on, move on to the other okay. items. I believe Karen now is zoomed in. Okay. Okay. Um, Karen, are you there? I'm hoping Karen's iPad is, is our down to work. Might not be she may be putting a kid to bed. Oh, here she is. No. Karen needed to figure out how to use <laughs> Karen to use her her iPad. Hi, everybody. Hey, Karen. How are you doing? Good. How are you? So, Karen, we're on the um the town meeting day update. So the house house bill that we forwarded to you. Yeah. Passed the house and a senate, so it's on the governor's desk for signature. Um. So it it essentially gives you the ability to move to the COVID rules for town meeting day both this year and next year. And so um, really from Karen's perspective, um, doesn't impact me a whole lot. Um, from Karen's perspective, to some extent from my perspective, um, assuming that this bill is signed into law, we'd like to get some direction on whether or not you would essentially have a full Australian ballot town meeting or have a traditional town meeting. Well, that's the point of information is water ring understanding this pre-COVID. So it's like a town meeting for all the town meeting. I know, and then all the people around the town meeting. Correct. That's the date for that. What's the date like? And then everybody then. 2020. 2020. Yeah. 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 I'm just, I know a lot of people who I've spoken with definitely would like to see going back to Waterbury's. Mike, Mike, hold on a second. Your connection's a little tough. I don't know if it's your microphone, but maybe move it away from something. It's touching something, but we're having a little trouble hearing it. That sound better? Not really. It's very scratchy. Yeah, I'm I'm getting the same because I'm having a little hard time hearing as well. So I don't know if it's my device. It's, yeah. it's better now. It's better now. Go ahead. Better now. Um, you know, again, I going back to what I initially said. I think there's momentum to go back to a traditional town meeting, but we are seeing again, as you can see from me from someone who's had, you know, a resurgence of, you know, COVID, you know, it's, you know, I'm pretty asymptomatic, you know, but I think it's people's choice. You know, I think you, you may see more people mask, even we may want to provide people with, with masks at town meeting and encourage people to mask, but I don't know. I, I just think that we don't get a good discussion of, town business via Australian ballot, especially that we have pretty significant, you know, articles that will be on the agenda. And that's just my personal opinion. And from people who I have spoken to, I have a lot of for a total Australian ballot. I think it's very difficult for that's Sorry, Mike. Okay. We just keep losing you, but I, I think that we got your sentiment and appreciate it. Um, and then if you don't mind, Mike, will you mute in between when you're speaking? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Right. So Tom, I have a question. If we make a decision this year, can we revisit next year since it looks like it's a two year, like we don't yeah. have to decide right now for two years. That's correct. Um because I, it's a conversation that I'd love to have with the board. I think it even could warrant half or a whole meeting. But, um, you know, you see other towns making changes as well. And while the nostalgia of town meeting is is really important to a lot of people and it affords big conversation, um, it's not all inclusive and it does exclude a lot of folks um, and is a big ask 
for, for people in the town. And I would love to have a bigger conversation, both with the board and the, the whole community and, and get input. And a lot of what we talk about here is anecdotal because we all talk to different folks in the town and it's a good mix, but it's not actual specific data that, you know, has numbers, qual you know, qualitative numbers attached to it. So um, I know that it's a, it's a really hard ask for a lot of people who have to work or have families, et cetera. And, you know, just because some people are having conversations doesn't mean everyone gets to. So it might be too big of a decision for, you know, so close to this year's town meeting, but that's a, a strong feeling that I have um, that if we decide to keep doing it because we really visited all of the reasons why and it's best for our community, not just because that's the way it's always been done. So um, just wanted to voice that. Mm -hmm. um, for the reasons you just cited, uh, particularly that uh, it's not a day off for most working people uh, and they really can't afford it to take that four hours of discussion off to you know, participate. Uh, my preference would be to have all voting measures uh, on the Australian ballot, but the, uh, to continue having that uh, public discussion for those that can participate um, and uh, allow that process to go forward, but to have all, all voting measures on, on the ballot. So yeah. you, do, you do understand that if you have Australian ballot for town meeting, you're required to have a public information meeting prior to that, which can be in public by Zoom. I mean, you can, that can be a hybrid meeting. Town meeting itself cannot be hybrid because you have voting going on. There's no way to be able to check the credentials. Of, Voting, uh, registered voters who are on, on Zoom. So, if you're going to have a um, town meeting by Australian ballot, you would have to have a public information meeting. Usually, it's a week before that you may have done it. My only comment is that, you know, Tom, I, I, I'm not up on the bill, but you said it. It's for two years. It allows us. To yeah, it's years. through uh, summer of next next summer. So, unless the legislature takes some action to change it, to make this emergency measure permanent, to go to what you want to do, requires having a town meeting. Mm -hmm. So, is is there going to be any more participation at next year's town meeting than there is at this year's town meeting? If you, I think if you want to talk to the voters about going to a Australian ballot format, have a town meeting and do it. I mean, it's because if if you just do it this year and next year because the legislature says so, the year after you have to come back and have town meeting because the voters the voters have to. Uh, without the emergency measures, the way you move from a open town meeting. To uh, an Australian ballot town meeting, is you have to have an open town meeting where it's on the morning, shall the voters vote to move So it couldn't Australian be done ballot. via this bill in, let's say we decided this year to go to Australian ballot, it couldn't be on that ballot? It could be. Right. So we don't have to. Well, have I, I don't know if it could be. So we would need to investigate. I don't know. Because it seems kind of. <laughs> So it's ingenuous to have a town meeting and ask if people want a town meeting. Well, but, yeah, but that's right, but that, you have to but be outside, outside, outside this special legislation. Right. Right? That's a good question. We yeah. have a legal opinion on it because yeah. without this emergency measure, you have to have an open town meeting to make a decision to go to an Australian. Right. Which is why I think within this, these two years, if we're able to, that would be the most equitable way to get feedback from the community. Oh, I just want to echo that. I think in a, I would love to know what our options are for an advisory question. I'm going to say I hear what Danny and Roger are saying so much, and I think ultimately this is something where I might need to change my thinking because I recognize what you're saying about access and inclusivity, and I grew up with town meeting, and I'm an absolute sucker for it. And so I'm just, I just, I think the hardest part of I think this conversation is that we don't have a time point, and I agree. Yeah, I work. I've worked in nonprofits, but I still work for nonprofits. I couldn't take town meeting as a holiday last year because our personnel policy reads town meeting day is a holiday if you attend town meeting. 
And we had a Australian balloting last year, so I took a vacation day to hold my sign up, but that's all the signs can put. Um, I think it is tough to go from having had our last one in 2020 and and never have an in-person town meeting again before we revisit the question. So I, I just I, I don't know what we decide for this year. I just to me there is a loss to say that we never knew it was our last in-person town meeting in 2020. It's still have a large in-person informational meeting. This would be the voting piece of that in the meeting. And my question is that I think we're not going to resolve tonight that I want to think about is how we create space so that it's well attended. I mean, I've attended the virtual one, so you've oh, yeah. got 40 people, and um, it feels like we don't have an extra compression meeting for the fire department or something, which is fine. But in my mind, honestly, yes, you get more voters, and I do fundamentally agree that is more participation. And so maybe, again, this is where I need to change and get on board with that. But I mean, and Bill said before he loves town meeting because at town meeting anyone can stand up and ask any question, and I just think I have not anyone though the people who anyone who was and I I came to town meeting too. I posted a uh, years ago. I posted something on Facebook about how I love town meeting because I had it as a holiday for my job, and I posted this like heartfelt, beautiful thing on Facebook, and immediately seventy responses. That's a like that's a really exciting point of view for you and all these people telling me their stories about how they can't attend or how they feel like and I, that's so so to say I'm commiserating because I changed my thinking as well and now I see it that way but um and just moving forward <laughs> the legal question Bill had that we need to we would need to answer is mm -hmm. are there any specific legal hurdles we need to cross if you were going to formally warrant to change your mm -hmm. format. But if you wanted to ask an advisory question, that would just be part of your warning. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, I think at a minimum, it's a really good idea to ask the question. Yeah. Because that's going to be data for the yeah. future, regardless of what decision we make about this year. Well, that's where you just move forward with complete posture and holding a public meeting. Part of that. Mm -hmm. um, you talk about inclusive inclusivity. Uh, it's there's so many variables in this question from one point to the other. Say people can't show up because they're working. If they were given the day off with pay, would they show up anyway? Uh, Australian ballot, how many people are actually informed about the issues they're voting on because you don't ever see them at these meetings uh, and the paper is only able to provide them with so much information so you know what what real what's the right word teeth or you know what real Teeth are there in their in the in their voting uh, to Australian ballot ballot um, understanding the issues like with her here tonight um, explaining to us what she talked about and how we arrived at uh, moving forward with the ARPA appropriation um, at least at town meeting you can ask the questions you can challenge the budget, you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, and at least it seems like there's more of a honest representation of at least the votes that are there as far as knowing the background or knowing, answering their questions. Uh, I'd be curious to know if Karen knows in the last two years through the Australian ballot vote, the attendance well, yeah. it was always yeah. significantly higher yeah. Yeah. Participation. way way more with, with Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron, just unmuted and I don't believe COVID, I don't believe COVID's ever going away. So well, that's, uh, huh? that's I mean oh yeah no it's so exciting. either gonna and I think that's part of the reason for the state doing what they did, right? Because mm -hmm. now they're being faced with what they're claiming is an uptick in COVID cases. So we're implementing this. Uh, giving the option. Yeah, giving the option for the next couple of years. And I, I believe that they'll probably make it permanent. Uh, unless they come up with some miracle cure, and they certainly haven't done that yet. Uh, 
Karen, did you have something you wanted to add? No, no, oh. I would, no, it was answered. It was answered. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I guess the question is, what do we want to resolve today? Or do we, we do, right? You don't have to resolve anything today. The bill is not passed. Um, we're proceeding internally as town meeting. I think we just, um, you know, if there's if there's support for just continuing that path, then I think we're we're all set. I guess how do we then ask the question to more? You know, if it's an advisory question, but it's at town meeting. How do we reach the people who are in our town meeting? And I don't know that we, yeah, is it a special? I don't know. My question was if it can be one that on a ballot on town meeting day, not on the floor of town meeting, or arguably it could be both, because I agree. Right, right, the 200 right. people yeah. in the room, could you come to the room again? It's not right. Right, right. right. And, small, but, yeah. and I think a lot of people can run into this problem. But just ballot. Just remember, there are there are many options, and I I've, I've worked in other towns, and it doesn't seem to matter when you have your open town meeting. You kind of get the same number of people. It's just different people. So the state law already allows you in towns like Waterbury, where you conduct all your business by Australia. I mean, all your business by four votes, except for the election of officers. You have your election of officers and any ballot item that would be bond votes and things like that all day on Tuesday from seven to seven. Mm -hmm. But there's town meeting for the open questions. You can do it the night before, or you can do it on the Saturday before. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I kind of agree with what Chris said in that you know, open town meeting is is a tradition. It's a function. You don't have to have the open town meeting at nine o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. You can have it at seven o'clock at night on Monday. You can have it at nine o'clock in the morning or noontime or three o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. So you already have those options available to you. All of them require the town to make the decision when it's going to be done. And except for this quirky special provision mm -hmm. right now, it all requires an open town meeting vote to go something different. Mm -hmm. And you know, if it's that important, maybe people would come out to an open town meeting to say this should be the last one. They did in Dark Swing. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the people have spoken then if we do that, right? Mm -hmm. I hate to see it out the door, but are we proposing a floor vote this year? That we have it, or because I guess the legal question is, I'd like to argue that it would be easier. Like, if you for just one for a second, and then I'll. It seems like your hands raised, and I can come back to you. Um, um, can we look into that? And, what do you think of trying to do that with all similar general bands or that? Potentially. Right. Give us a, give us a, Mike, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, I'm kind of want to piggyback on what both Chris and Bill have said. I think it's really important the discussion of the budget. I, I think that's one of the most important by town meeting. And I think to do the town budget, 
Vikings were built by the Chargers. Yes, they want to have a special. Should we be? What's that? Um, I... Can you could you work on maybe being succinct in what you're telling us because your sound goes in and out? So if you could shorten what you want to say, we might have a better chance of hearing it. Yeah, I'm having audio's going in and out on my connection as well. So it sounds like the gist is you you want to let folks have input on particularly the budget conversation. And I think we should have a discussion about moving, you know, whether moving to a evening meeting, moving to a Saturday meeting, where, where we might have more participation. Do I yes. think we're going to get more participation? I don't know. But I do think by not having discussion of town budgets, I think we lose something in the town. Personal opinion, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Would you would you please mute when you are talking, Mike? Thank you so much. I mean, assuming everybody works during a week, not on weekends, we could try a Saturday. That way, it gives <laughs> gives one parent. I mean, the, the reality is that the people that do get the day off the of town meeting, a lot of them go for the town meeting. They That's right. See it. that, you know. I mean, it's. I'm not sure that this is a new phenomenon. I think if you go back to 1935 and look at the population of the town and the number of people that come to town, I doubt it isn't all that different. Sure. That doesn't mean we don't want to look at it and do the best we can for the most people. So I think the conversation is healthy. Whether we change anything or not is almost irrelevant. Um, but hearing feedback from people in our town, it's our responsibility to have the conversation see what works the most for the most people and maybe we change nothing but maybe we do um so i'm not i'm not comfortable saying well, this is how we've always done it and nobody else will come let's just do it i think it's important that we all have our points of view but that we ask for input from the town but as well it's, it's, yeah, i don't disagree i'm not on the board and i'm not the manager right. so thank you for mm -hmm. listening to me. um i think the conversation though you, you can't have the conversation if it's just an Australian ballot vote. What does it mean? Are we going to do It's just yes or no. It's not, well, isn't there another way that we can do it? I mean, in Duxbury, they had a meeting. The people came to a special town meeting, an open special town meeting. They talked about what they wanted, why they wanted to change it, what the hurdles were, what the options were to make it better. And they came up with we're going to go to Australian ballot and we're going to have a meeting in January and we're going to all bring pie to the, the meeting. I mean, that couldn't have happened if you just had an Australian ballot but, vote. Well, there's no reason why we can't have a similar meeting and the rules would allow us to have a hybrid meeting in that case as well, as far as I understand, right? To have an open meeting, to have a conversation, yeah. informational, um, to, have, to have, get input. It doesn't have to just be a yes to know on a ballot like we can also have a meeting to solicit it but just like that's great to i don't you know it's an option for us as well i think that two years but ago they had a town meeting <laughs> they warned the meeting yeah i mean the interesting of this right assuming it passes is in some ways i think it gives us the option right because but for this being here we couldn't do a full correct right so we did without doing that so we have the option to do that for a year that we wouldn't otherwise have. Or yeah. you can revert and. I mean, the Monday is it. I mean, yes, it's a good option. I did look at uh, how uh, the e district kills uh, mm -hmm. the uh, fire safety for uh, informational meeting uh, on a meeting. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that was a good turn. In part because there was state, because you have to be there to vote. And we heard right. a lot of feedback as someone doing outreach around that saying, well, I can't go in person to vote for that. And so there was a big push to make want to show up. And so I think that was the. Yeah. So I don't know if we're in a position to vote on this tonight. Uh, I, I guess I would support trying a Monday night uh, meeting for this year and uh, having this as a point of discussion during that meeting. But that would be a Monday informational meeting, right? And then that would be no, actually, no. no I, yeah, we, we changed the date of it, and 
Based on this bill, because it says you can have it at a, at a different date. Yeah. So I think this gives us, we want to double check, but this says we can move the date. Um, so, so it would be a later date. So Correct. Monday, 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 take a week later on Monday. You know what I mean? So I think if the time has changed, is that legal? Like we want to just double check, but this gives us flexibility in changing the date. Okay. So. Suggesting holding the town meeting on a Monday night? Yeah. That's Chris's suggestion. Right. So, how, what does that do for the voting aspect of it? Yeah, well, for this one, we would have to be there. Oh. So, just just I mean, logistics, logistics, just mm -hmm. we got to worry about logistics right now. Okay. So, town meeting day is Tuesday. We have an open town meeting, or whether we have an open town meeting or an Australian ballot town meeting. School is closed on that Tuesday, and it's a lot easier to have a meeting in the gym mm -hmm. when school is closed than everything else. If you're going to move it to a Monday and you're still going to try to have it in the school, well, we don't know what's going on in school on Monday, so we'd have to get, you know, is that, a, is that an issue? Uh, because if you move it to a Monday later than town meeting, then you're going to be asking for the custodial staff to set up all the thing after school is done and tear it all down before school starts the next day. So an open town meeting, if you're going to do that this year, I would recommend that you just do it on Tuesday and put your question on the morning for next year. If you want to have an Australian ballot meeting and we can find out whether we can permanently do away with open town meeting. With an Australian ballot question, if I can get that answer from somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah, we're just thinking if you're going to actually hold town meeting on a Monday evening, you're going to have voting booths set up. Some people may not. So the voting, if you had it on Monday evening, the, the gym would have a bunch of chairs on it. And then after the meeting ended, the chairs would have to be taken down and the voting booths would have to be put up, which is, you know, they usually go up on Monday afternoon when the school is closed and Woody and the highway crew or the water department people help Carla or in this case now Karen uh, get the gym ready. So on Monday night, then all day voting on Tuesday, the next day is a little bit of a challenge. That's what I was getting at. Yeah, all, the, all of that part of it. And then, you know, because if you're going to vote on everything too on Monday, but it sounds like that'd be almost impossible. So the, the Monday, <laughs> the, the night meeting Monday, and then the Tuesday Australian yeah. ballot requires people to come twice. Yeah. Which is the downside to, to that. So that's why a lot of towns like Waterbury say, well, if we're going to have an open town meeting, we'll just. Have it Tuesday morning, and you can be there once and vote and in the meeting. So there's pluses and minuses. You yeah, know, I see that. Pushes yeah. and pulls to everything. There's no perfect solution. So okay. we can talk about this more on yeah. Monday. <laughs> All right. Take note. Still not library. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's, I don't know where she must have forgotten. Or I can present it, but um, Woody's waiting here. So. Sure. We'll move on to public works. Okay. And I can, um, I'm not sure if he went home or if he's down the hall, but hmm. he's on Zoom. Let me um, hit the highlights and let, let Woody fill in, the, fill in the numerous gaps I'll leave. Um, maybe, maybe him or... Um, there he is. Yeah. And patiently waiting in his office. <laughs> Wait, how are you here and still on Zoom? Be aware, it's going hard outside, so. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I might just stay. <laughs> so, uh, looking at the very top line, which is property taxes, a uh, pretty substantial uh, increase. Uh, compared to last year, um, 
driven by uh, three big things. Uh, the first is in 2022, the, the select board and the voters approved $95,000 in ARPA funds to offset the property taxes going into the highway fund. So you, you use one shot revenue and you got to make up for it the next year. So we we're making up for that. Um, the second piece is um, in the highway budget, we bill battled with the auditors a little bit. And I've had this battle in St. Albans too, where there's, there's an accounting rule that you're not supposed to budget for debt in your capital project funds. Um, traditionally, that's the way it was done here. And so I've just, just decided that um, I don't want to fight with the auditors over that. So the, the debt is out of those funds and all consolidated here. Um, I've just decided that I'll have a few fights with the auditors, I'm sure, but this is an easy one I can we can fix by just moving the fund, the money in one spot. So that um, has a little impact here. Um, part of it is the highway fund. Uh, you carry fund balance forward. And last year there was fund balance to carry forward and reduce taxes. And this year it's in the red. Um, so starting off a little bit, uh, fuel, labor, a bit of everything. So we're starting off with a few challenges, but I think we, we make up for them okay. Um, and really aside from taxes and the ARPA funds, there's not much on the revenue side to talk about for highway. Um, the rest is pretty small and pretty comparable to prior years. Um, if you go down to line 32, which is the pay, you'll see that's up about 10%. Um, part of that is we gave the crew a raise in, I believe, November as part of a retention strategy and to keep up with all the other neighboring towns. Um, and part of that assumes another 5% raise uh, if the budget's approved. And again, that's just to keep up with uh, what we're seeing in the market. And if you've got a CDL right now, it's um it's a, it's a good market for you. And if you look at that, um, the regular pay line, you see we budgeted 409, 10,000. And our actual was basically right on par. And that looks like everything is all right. But we had awesome. some vacancies yeah. Yeah. and we should have had in a, in a year we, where we didn't have to make two mid-year um, wage increases, you know, that would have been probably twenty thousand dollars is good. So you know that line is a little deceiving in that um, you know, we, we we paid what we budgeted, but we didn't have as many hours of work as we had budgeted. Yeah, we're um we're hopeful we can find a mechanic. Um, budgeted that at about three quarter salary. Um, we're talking to someone now and hoping to get someone signed on that would be full time. So that would increase that wouldn't impact this year because they wouldn't start until essentially the first quarter is over. So we'd be fine in 2023. But in 2024, we'd have a, a little bit of an extra jump because of that. But I'm from talking to to Woody and Celia and Gary. Um, I'm really convinced the mechanics a good investment. Mm -hmm. We've traditionally had it, and we thought about. You got to be paying for maintenance one way or the other. I'm going to pay one way or the other. The mechanic can also drive and has a CDL, mm -hmm. so when there's a big snow event, we've got that person there. Um, moving down to the second page, a um, couple things I want to I want to highlight. Um, first one's small, but I just want to point it out. But um, line fifty two is rent. Um, historically, the through the, and it's just been put here, but the, there's been a rent charge, uh, which is funds paid to EFUD, uh, but you now own the property. Most of the property. Um, going down um, a little further, that equipment ma maintenance line, which is line 58 of 37,500, that's a little decline from last year. And part of that is um, the mechanic. Part of that is that last year was really the high year. And we've got a, a truck that we sank a bunch of money into in 2022 to keep running and it's finally uh, finally hit its end. Um, 
And then the other piece uh, down in line 59 in vehicle maintenance, um, it's budgeted as the same amount as last year. Um, we were pretty good this year. Um, and right at the end, because we were pretty good in the budget, we um, we spent uh, about $10,000 and bought new tires for the greater, which needed them. Um, it's originally envisioned as part of 2023, but we were just able to execute in 2022 and make 2023 a bit easier. Um, yeah. And we could get them, yeah. Line 61. So that's part of the 30, yeah. Line 61 is diesel. That one is what it is. Um, I think it's a pretty reasonable number that assumes that we don't get worse. But that's, you know, 30, uh, a third of a penny, I guess, in the tax rate just for fuel. Um, line 72, um, just want to point out salt. So that's level funding compared to last year's budget uh, within the actual for this year. Salt is $88 a ton now. Um, Celia had really wanted about 700 tons, but we massaged it a bit in part because we really haven't used it this year so far. Next week looks a little more like a normal winter in terms of the snow and I guess right now. Um, so we've, in talking to, to Woody and talking to Celia, they've heard the message from the board over the years to try to conserve salt and use less. So we're going to try to do that. And we've been pretty lucky the first few weeks of January. Mm -hmm. um, while you're on that subject, I'll bring up a, a uh, incident that I just witnessed yesterday. It wasn't in this town, but it was in another town close by. Second of Paved Road it was 90 percent bare. There was a few patches besides that little table there in the middle, every so often down the road. And they were dumping salt on each and every one of them. So it just blew my mind that they were and the temperature was going up. They were like the whole last night it was 37 degrees. Uh, and so frustrating things like that that uh, just gets me. I'm glad to see the salt reduction. Um, but bear in mind, Chris, if the winter is really oh, backloaded and we, and we need to spend 55, we'll have to spend 55. Were you ever able to get in touch with the uh, so town manager about uh, the salt, salt placement uh, in Montreal? No, I did not. It slipped my mind. It was a note I made, but talked to him about other things but not salt from montreal well i just think it was buffered from the great fluctuations uh, that have been caused by the lack of availability of salt that comes in by rail yeah uh, because he gets it off of a barge uh, do they have storage that's part of our yeah, challenge yeah, we yeah, really I don't have it that's the other part of the question is can we buy when the prices are low and store it yeah yeah and then the other question is, and, and Chris doesn't want to hear this, but I, I feel like if you've, it's human nature. If you've got a really large salt stockpile, it's 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 a bit easier to look at it and use it. I think he recognizes it. Probably, I think it's there, so let's put it on the road. Um, and I want to go down a little further, line 76, gravel resurfacing. So some of that is here. Um, and it's here because I envision this budget as um, almost like the emergency gravel resurfacing that, that they've got to do in mud it's season. Mud season. Yeah. Um, but that line historically is not just materials, but we've historically, uh, and last year was an example, we rented an excavator for about $20,000 to help do some of that work. And so when we get to the highway vehicles, plan is to buy an excavator because we can essentially pay for itself in five years, which I think is a pretty good time. So is this the one where it's, uh, you budgeted 36 and uh, the cost is only 21 and 7? Yeah, but, but if you look above um, in line 70, we had that emergency road repairs, which was the mud season okay. separately tracked. Oh, right. So that's 30,000 above that. Yeah. Um, and then line 83 is a big number. Um, that's the, the transfer. So mechanically, 
taxes go to the highway fund and then the highway fund transfers funds to the capital funds. Um, and Bill and I at an earlier meeting and the, the board accepted the idea of consolidating the capital funds, yeah. um, which we will do um, in the interest of, of time. I'm, I'd really like to get it done in this budget, but it might not, just might not happen mechanically. Mm -hmm. uh, but at a minimum, we'll, we'll work on that with the auditors too and, and have that in 2024. I'd like to do it in 2023, but I just wanna, don't want a hundred percent promise, but it's the way we think of them as a combined. Um, so, you know, I ask you a quick question, maybe one over my head there. Why is it down about a thousand? Um, just budgeting less this year. If you look at line 81, the debt, so the debt used to be in those capital funds. So we had to transfer more to those funds. So the debt now is here. Um, so it's, it's still down, down, it's still down, 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 about, still down a little bit. But if you add that 160, 025, and then 4732, which is interest. So make that 165 and add that to the 190. It's you pretty know, comparable. It's 755. So it's about forty thousand yep. dollars down from the last year. Right? And and I think you know, the the hope was because what you've been talking about for a long time, Chris, you know, we've got infrastructure issues. I, I think the idea was if we can transfer the same amount to the capital funds without impacting the tax rate dramatically, we'd still do that. But right now, um, you know, he's working towards a particular tax rate. And right now it's $45,000 down in terms of the transfer. Yeah. But there's debt that's going away as well from uh, you know, yeah. paving. The paving debt for Perry Hill has two years left. Yep. So um, in 2020, so other debt that's going away. So. In 2020, this year we started the budget, in essence, in the whole 95,000 because of the the ARPA funds used. Next year we'll start at a zero. In 2025, about about 55,000, I believe, in debt goes away. So we're not facing any headwind the next few years. Um. Onto the next page, which is Fund 70, the paving fund. Um, I just want to talk about this in, in broad strokes. So there's $405,000 going into here, which would pay for the same amount of paving. And for now, we mimicked last year with class three and class two, but um, we're not there yet in terms of the paving plan. I mean, you know. Woody can can talk with the contractors and give you two million dollars in paving to do in a heartbeat. Um, but the the intent for tonight, I think, is to endorse the amount, the four hundred five thousand, and then he'll come back to you in in pretty soon, I think, in a couple months, and he can break that four hundred five thousand dollars down into particular roads. Uh, one challenge we're working through internally is. Um, and Woody, get, help me with the road names. You've told me this 10 times, my memory's bad, but we'd there's a water line we'd like to repair, yep. which is a main um, water line. Ashford Lane, Kennedy Drive area, um, which is up there, it's in terrible shape, but there is water work that's somewhat pending that we'd like to do. Um, so do the, do the water line that we'll pay about the Yeah, so the... the you're getting a preview. You're ahead of the EFUD commissioners, but the EFUD budget for water will have a half million dollars to do that line. Okay. Um, but the last we heard is if we order the pipe today, what's the what's the time frame? Forty weeks or so. You can't get pipe for forty weeks. Dr. Yeah, yeah. Some sizes of plastic, same. So. So we'd really like to do that this calendar year, but. It may be difficult. Supply yeah, supply right. chain issues. <laughs> right. Can we yeah. pave in November? <laughs> Good time to start. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know, Woody, if, the, if we can't get the water line done, is there anything we can do this year to just well, improve the road a little bit? There's 
the water line as designed wouldn't necessarily affect a lot of Kennedy Drive. So we could we could do Kennedy Drive, but Ashford Lane and the loop belt back there would we're going to destroy that the water line. So and I'd be a little bit concerned about put the traffic over the new part of the pavement to fix right. yeah. the part. So yeah, I mean it's it's in terrible shape now. Um I'm not sure if you're jumping ahead when you're on it. When I think, you know, either my first or second day, Bill drew me down that road. So this yeah. is a priority. It is a mess. So we're we're working on it. Um, so what would we come to you with the paving plan in a couple months? And you could massage that as desired. Um, on the highway infrastructure fund, uh, this is a lot of meat and potatoes. Um, there's some not in here, but it won't impact the bottom line or taxes, but still new information that I'm gathering, but there's some leftover Main Street grant project. Um, so it's grant funded. So maybe as soon as Monday, I'll have some different numbers in here related to that, but it doesn't impact any taxes. Um, the big ask are the ARPA bridge projects. Um, so I, I put that in the request to you um, in part, I had a conversation with Alec. Um, I, I think I said a little bit before the meeting, but I wanna, wanna give him kudos. I, I get in here every morning at usually five or 10 after eight and, and Alec is here waiting for me uh, or Woody. He's, you know, he's the retired guy, but he's still showing up. And every day I sit down and he educates me about something. And so a few weeks ago, he educated me about the bridges and he had put together a bridge plan back in October that I sent out. Um, talking to Alec, talking to Woody, um, you know, $400,000 for those two bridges would have a pretty big impact on the capital budget, wherever we plugged it in. It'd be, it'd be enough that it'd have you know, a pretty big one-time impact on the tax rate, or we'd have to, for a year, sacrifice something like paving, which I know no one wants to do. So I feel like if we're talking about one-time funds that are for one-time uses, mm -hmm. um, that's are, those are- life expectancy of a repaired bridge? Um, well, the two bridges in question, Armory Drive, Bridge 33 was built in 1960. So that's still in service, obviously. And the one up on uh, Guffle Road, bridge number four, was built in 53 or something like that. So um, the other bridge is falling in right now, yeah. but they're 70 sad. years or something. Yeah. So these complete repairs? Or no, not? no, it's death repair, apply a membrane, paint the beams, do guardrail work. Yeah. yeah. And so Alex said it's. Monitors would probably say 20 years. Later. Yeah. And Alex so said it's. 25, 30. Yeah. This would be enough that, you know, I'd be retired by the time. <laughs> the town would have to invest in these, these again. But, How about number three? That looks like it's in worse shape. Maybe that's just a surplus. The, the, one, the, the little one right here. Uh, this is, we've done a little work on that. Yeah, um, that's on the list of bridge. The numbers that seem to work out best was bridge 33 and bridge 4. Okay. And that, I, I believe Alex's number for that bridge was much smaller. Yeah, so but it's, it's narrow and it just looks like it's degrading, but I may be wrong. So, can I ask a quick question? Uh, I've always been a little confused as to why we don't, when we do paving projects, we never pave over the bridge part. Um, well, you can sometimes. Um, bridge four, uh, just before Game of Black, which is on the list here, has six inches of paving on it. So. I mean, that's been talked once or twice. Um, the, when they do the work, they'll put three inches back. Um, it's just a question of adding that static load to the bridge, the, num the number of tons. So um, I guess looking long term here, is, is your goal to fix the bridges on Delta Road and then is that higher section of road so you can be paved at some point? Gonna have to be, yeah. Um, bridge four, we drop that down a little bit and taper back both ways so that when the paving ever happens, we'll be done. 
and then heal them all kind of across there. So they won't, so, so they'll just blend to it instead of scaling where you completely do over it. They'll fill the water. Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll butt to whatever the bridge project is. I mean, I read through the notes here from, you said this here from the, I don't know what's his name there. I'm getting there off the top of my head. Is, oh. No, the guy that's done the work in the past. Uh, what's it? Yeah, Austin. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And some of the work on bridge four is to correct the abutment. You know, if you're familiar, that one has a abutment that they no longer use the design. So the bridge over the time, you get a bump and a bump as you work come on and off the bridge. So some of the work on that is entirely that. So I think it's a great use of the ARPA money. Um, bridges, you know. We've got bridge 36 at the top of Snow Street coming up. That's state paid. We're just paying a small portion of that, but you know, bridge projects are millions of dollars. You know, and if we do a little bit, keep them up, then millions of dollars doesn't fall on us. I mean, you're saving the interest on having. If it were paid more by a, a higher tax rate, then there wouldn't be any interest. But if you had to bond for it, then. It's I mean, you could certainly bond for it, and it, it's four hundred thousand dollars. You wouldn't need to. You could bond for it over twenty years, but it wouldn't have that big an impact if you did shorter. But I, I think, um, why pay interest if, if the cash is here? And so, of all the of all the projects I've been confronted with and the concepts, um, I think, quite frankly, the bridges are the best. No offense to Downstreet or any other priorities, but I think it's a really good use of take this liability off the books for foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, and then I just want to talk about the, the gravel resurfacing. Um, so I put it here because it's conceptually a little bit different. Um, not that the town has never fully resurfaced gravel roads, but this is, you know, in essence, some excavation, put down new road fabric new material. I, I guess it's an acknowledgement in my mind that winters in general are gonna be warmer and that means more freeze thaw cycles and these roads will take a bit more maintenance. Um, can't afford to pay them all. Um, so I'm, so my thought was to, in essence, in a small way pivot and create the line here and then ideally each year grow it a bit in the same way we will try to grow the paving budget. Um, so in year one, I proposed to fund half of it with ARPA. To get us started, uh, thirty of ARPA and thirty of town money, um, and then we talked about internally uh, Sweet Road initially, and and um, with Celia, and then you know other people have said you know Perry Hill Road was really really tough last spring, and so similar to the paving where we bring you a plan later in the year, I think the concept is to get through mud season and that might give us some new information about what needs to be done. And maybe it's not all one road. From talking to Celia and Woody, it, we don't wanna, you know, you have a cost issue if you try to spread this out in 10 different places, you wanna be linear, um, but really mud season might redetermine your priorities a bit. <laughs> so I'm not asking for you to endorse Sweet Road or Perry Hill Road today, but the, you know, the funding, the concept to think about. Yeah. What about the constituents of the people who will sit and sit on the county hall road in accessibility? Yeah. Just find ourselves some sort of medical distress. Yeah. So hopefully we can chip away at that and just make some slow progress. Um, and then you'll see the Sweet Road Quarry. Uh, that's town funds, not ARPA funds. So. Um, I've got our attorney, Joe McLean, working on, in essence, a legal slash permitting roadmap as to what are the steps we'd have to take, assuming the state is interested in either giving us that property or, or leasing it. Um, Woody has met with McCullough, I believe, and visited the site, so we're trying to work on some estimate of yard or cubic yards of, of gravel that are that's there to be crushed and from that we can 
in essence, build a performa and build a plan and, and build a feasibility plan. So that's what that $20,000 is for. Um, it's really for professional services, but the concept would be assuming the state and there's right now, I don't believe there's a department head of forest and parks. I know he just retired. So I don't think the governor's appointed yet, but assuming. Yeah, but I don't think an acting director is gonna have a huge amount of interest. <laughs> But, but assuming the state gives us some is willing to sit down and we have we can develop some sort of a plan and assuming mm -hmm. that Joe McLean can give us some understanding of the legal hurdles, how high they are, how costly they are, yeah. plus assuming that the pro forma makes sense, um, then we can come back to you. Um, at some point, I hope later this year, but it's going to take some time to, to get there. And we can come back to you and say, we think there's X number of yards of good gravel here for our purposes, central to our gravel road system. We think the, the cost is this and the savings is this compared to what we have to buy. And we think you should either hit the green light or not and go from there. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, um, I, uh, Tom, I think that I'm very much in favor of the quarry project. Mike, uh, not understanding. Can you try again? Uh, is this better? Give us a good shot. Hey, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Try, mute, try muting your Zoom and calling my cell phone, and I'll put you on speaker. Well, no, I just had, I'm missing something, I'm sure, but I'm seeing 495 of partial funded bridge and road projects, and then 430, yeah, I, so am I missing something? No, I, I made a, I'll adjust that. Well, so then 495 is off. It should be 465. What? Where's that from? Um, so my my issue, um, hang on, let me get Mike. Mike, you there? <laughs> you know, using the phone versus by the iPad has created a lot more challenges. But my question, as much as I am a firm believer in this potential quarry project, I assume that's going to have to go through a full Act 250 review. Not necessarily, Mike. When Ed Stanick talked to me about it there some eight years ago, he said, good part about it is, Chris, we don't need an Act 250 permit because it's under 10 acres. That's what are the exact words. I remember it like it was yesterday. I think regardless, the step that Tom is proposing, we get a permitting roadmap, seems like a great step. Yeah, I'm not going to confirm or deny what Chris said. I'm going to I'm going to go Donald Brumfeld on you and say there are known unknowns. <laughs> no, I think I just because I know if we get into an Act 250, I think that's going to you know with especially with we know a few neighbors who are going to be pretty belligerent about this whole thing. You know, this could get into a very expensive project. Sure. But just my thoughts. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, so can we look at that number a lot? Yeah, so this is a, this is a Tom White's 1130 at night mm -hmm. issue and talking to Alec about contingencies. So um, I'm actually asking for Alex's number was 403 uh -huh. for the roads and bridges, right. but that was an October of 2022 number. Uh -huh. And so with some additional contingency for, for, those, for those two bridges. So with some additional contingency, um, the the final number will be a bit more. So that yeah, 435. Yeah, the memo yeah. says 435. Yeah. So, so 435 okay. for the bridges and then 30 right. for the yeah. 30 for the road. Oh. And one of the other challenge with the bridges is, um, and, and Woody can speak oh, to okay. this, is that the bridges may not be a 2023 project. Right. Mm -hmm. And maybe they will be. 
Yeah, we, uh, Alex spoke with the contractor we use, uh, George Austin, and it might be, it might not. We meet again with him next week. So, uh, and we may have a fine tuned number. There's, there's no materials or anything that are long, long lead times. It's all simple concrete and membranes and work. So, so use contracts? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there's a chance. You know, of course, he's staffing all those issues, but yeah, there's a chance this year. We'll see. We'll know more next week. Yeah. So, so those are the big conceptual numbers. Um, and I can fine tune that for Monday. Can I ask you, Woody? Yep. Um, did you actually meet with Fred? Yeah, we went up to the quarry. Yeah, it's been about a Monday. Um. <laughs> He took a sample of the rock with him. He said in his, in his experience, the rock appears to be very hard, very hard rock, very abrasive, which is good and bad right. in that it's good material, but it costs you more to crush. Um, he also said it was pretty cold, right? Yes, yes, yeah. So pretty pretty what? Old ancient oh. rock. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's technically it's technically a calcareous greenstone mm -hmm. with quartzite grains. Wow. <laughs> so and I confirmed that with a geologist. I'm not that I didn't trust red, but yeah, <laughs> it was nice to get a second opinion on that. And he confirmed the same thing, hard stone, uh very abrasive. Um he thought there's a lot of material there, you know, getting in there. Uh, the overburden off blasting if you have to the proximity of the neighbor's houses um the efud e water source water. right across the road yeah, yeah. um it, you know but he said you know a place that has good stones worth money you know so and he seemed intrigued by it and you know yeah. i knew that was going to be hard rock yeah, he told me everything pretty much. He's, you know, he climbed all around the stones, took some with him, and, you know, yeah. And, you know, what do you say about some of the bigger stuff that's laying around there? Have you said, did he give you any ideas of how they'd bust that up? Yeah, they'd probably have to try to rock hammer it and see if they could make it into a manageable size and uh, take it from there. Mm -hmm. It would only be worth his while if he came in for. Say ten to fifteen thousand yards per two dinner per year, and however many years we did that might be up to I guess how much we want to use. So we go through that. Um, we would go through that. The only use depends on what he's going to make for us. Whether he's just going to make clean stone or make a plant mix that we can use on the road, so we wouldn't have a problem with going through what he. If you get him in there for ten or fifteen thousand yards, we wouldn't have come over. Would you say how long it takes to make ten? Yeah, yeah, we could do ten to fifteen thousand yards. He thinks in four to five weeks of work. Just for the changes, that's yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's a good question. I think the general hope here is to just tell you at some point this year, are the hurdles insurmountable? If they're, if they're not, what's the cost to get over them? Yeah, no, I think it's worth it. It's worth it. Sounds like the best uh, source of uh, aggregate uh, that's locally available. Yeah. Um, and then moving on to highway vehicles, a um, couple couple of significant items here to talk about. Um, first one is actually towards the bottom of the page, and that's the excavator. Um, it's part of the gravel road strategy is that we've rented an excavator and spent around $20,000 the last few years. So to buy it for less than 100 seems like a pretty sound investment. So the, the budget, new. No. We, we've always had that's one. It's a second one. We've always had one. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many hours that one has on and offhand. I don't think it's old, Woody. No, no, no. no. 
The one that we got now. Yeah. That's a Volvo. Yes. And yeah, and it is old, right? It did buy no, it. no, it's yeah. just a few yeah. years. Yeah. It's relatively new. So why it's once a second one? Because we've been two? Yeah. we've been renting one during the summer. No, I get that. Yeah. And part of this, I didn't budget for this. I wanted to well monitor we monitor the actuals. Um but if EFUD uses it, of course, they'll pay their fair share for it. So does that mean we're going to have an additional person allowed to operate it? Potentially. <laughs> That's a different conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the proposal would be to pay cash for that. And then there's the above that, um, there's the one ton dump truck for $140,000. So that's not a, that's a replacement plan, um, a standard replacement plan. Um, and the reality is um, in 2022, we ordered the truck for 110 and we'll pay for it in 2023 when it actually arrives, we hope. And in 2023, we'd We've already ordered this truck for 140. We pay for it essentially when it would arrive in 2024. And the reason we ordered it is because there's such a long lead time. And if the budget's not approved, the vendor will have no problem selling it. So there's no liability to us to say, sorry, voters didn't approve it on town meeting day. This lead time has been growing. It used to be, you know, we would go to buy a truck at town meeting and we would have the truck by June, July, and even before COVID, it was starting to be, well, can you get the select board to authorize the 54 town meeting because it's gonna take X amount of time and we might get it by November. And we started doing that. And now it's, when you buy these vehicles and 12, 13, 15 months go by before you get it. Yeah. So it's really put a whole different spin on the, you know, we've got vehicles that we plan a six or seven year life for, and then you go ahead and buy it, but another year and a half goes by. So have it. we're having to rework the whole schedule. It's challenging. One more question before I forget. Can you, you have an idea how many uh, ton that excavator is? It's similar in size to the one we have now. That's going to be what? You wouldn't know better than I do. No. It's going to be close to 15,000 pounds. That sounds right. The other thing I want to point out in the in the highway budget um, and, and meeting with Celia and Woody, um, the, the detail they gave me behind you know, each budget line item, they had just spreadsheet upon spreadsheet. And so um, in working in other places and being in this business for a while, that's just the most meticulous best work I've, I've ever seen on that side of things. So I really need to commend them for, for that. You know, when you, when you ask, when you ask them for a budget, um, you know, there's a $10,000 line that we see, but behind it, you know, they've got everything that adds up to that. Um, in just extreme detail, so it was great. Um, and then a small thing I just want to point out here, um, and you, you'll see this on Monday, the cemetery. Um, we talked, we spent some time with them talking about a vehicle, um, and we settled, and, and they would pay for it with a transfer, um, but we settled on, uh, in essence, these uh, they call them side by sides, but these gators with a dump bed that that they would use for maintaining uh, the cemeteries and doing some light work, um, and they're about fifteen thousand uh, dollars. It's not a super fancy big vehicle, um, but that's a purchase they push for. Um, so they they're actually transferring money into into here a few thousand dollars. We just paid off over a few years. Um, I would. And that'd be an internal loan with, with probably the tax stabilization fund. I would normally just tell them to pay for it um, since they've got their own funds, but like everything else, the market's down. So maybe if the market recovers next year, I'll tell them, well, you know, your, your funds grew, so let's just pay it off and be done with it. 
Um, but for now, it's just finance over a few years. So that's the, the highway uh, and the equipment highlights. Um, uh, we have a library, but oh, go ahead. So I'll present the library, but that's okay. fine. No, I want it. I don't want to take up anybody's too much of anybody's time. Um, <laughs> yeah, for your extra uh, yeah. um, no, I wanted to speak about MLK Day. Um, as you may or may not know. We work under about a 30 plus year old personnel policy here. Uh, we do not get, and as employees, we do not get MLK day off. And I was somewhat in the in the world now. Um, MLK has been a federal holiday since Reagan was president. Mm -hmm. Reagan was president somewhere, yeah. Um, and Vermont recognizes it all as the holiday. And I think when you folks deferred your meeting from MLK Day. I think that said something to me that in deference to the holiday, you, you kind of treat it as a holiday. Um, I loosely kept track of who came in the office on Monday and it was two people. Um, Not important, it two. Two, yeah. Two, um, two, um, two, 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 yes. two, yes. so um, I think um, I just wanted to get that in there. I want to ask Bill Shepard how many times I've asked him on the personnel policy. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You don't know where they're going. The rest of the answer is the same, but it's, it's already except for the round time. No, but when you folks deferred your meeting from Thursday night, and I said to myself, somebody said to me, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And if you people are goose, I'm a gander. So. <laughs> People on the list of meant to say was we're highly aware and sorry well, no, I, and actively plan to do our best, but it's being worked, it's actively being worked on all this year, 100 yeah. correct. Yeah. And hopefully, that is yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, the there's a chance your highway guys are going to have to work MLK day, but so it does, it can be and you're yeah. right, yeah. and sometimes there are exceptions, but um, it's done. It's being actively worked on and, and you're absolutely do we expect to address that? <laughs> or do we have a budget? We will have time to go. There's one section that's so between now and then down meeting it. If that's what you want. No, I don't want to hold anybody. I just um, yeah. Well, that, that. <laughs> I just closed the business Monday, and then I went, oh, uh, well, the meeting truth be told, I was what I was Friday afternoon. I was talking to Karen, and I was saying, you know, well, 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 on to, you know, let's finalize the meet the the agenda now for the for the Thursday meeting. Um, just thinking we were close, and she said, well, I'll, I'll be here Monday to finalize it. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Oh, you're not you're not taking the day off." She said, "No, we're open." And I said, "I didn't know that." <laughs> so, <laughs> Veterans Day. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you can talk to me. Yeah. Well, send an email on what they said. Um, Tuesday. I think so. He said, uh, "said uh, I had no idea you guys were work." And during our hiring process, we met with a lot of folks who, you know, we get 14 holidays yes. a year, you know, or 10. And I don't, yeah. It's not the number of it's not the number of holidays, it's the spirit of the holiday. And yeah. It's supposed to be. Thank you. Yeah. Well Thank you. Yeah. All right. Drive safe. It's not good out there. So Thank you. For walk safe. Throw some salt down for us. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, shall we trickle back to the library budget? Sure. Um, so, a couple, a couple significant items here. Um, 
first is in current year taxes, uh, which is really the number that should matter to you. And, and I would tell you that if whether it's this year or some future year, if, if you ever tell me that the tax rate is too high, I wouldn't advise you to line by line say cut this, cut that. I'd advise you to tell me to say here's what we need to get to, and I would go back to the budget and the library and other organizations. Um, but the library this year has a six percent increase in the taxes they're asking for from town taxpayers. Um, part of that is uh, the fund balance issue, similar to highway. Last year, the library had about fifteen thousand dollars in funds to carry over, um, and this year it's essentially zero. Um, Which is what we budgeted. I mean, we we budget to use the fund yeah. balance. That's that's. You know, it's how you do it. That's how you're supposed to do it. So it's not, in essence, one-time funds. It's you, you have a surplus, you use it. Um, and then the other piece is the pay is up for the library. Um, that assumes that the 5% raise for employees on April 1st. And then there also, there's an employee that is uh, 35 hours a week that they're seeking to increase, I think the 37 and a half, but it, that That adds up. Um, the library has been uh, a little bit of a different world when it comes to attracting staff and that they haven't had the challenges the town has had. It seems like library staff in general, um, it seems to be a robust labor market. It's the best way to put it. Um, you know, that being said, you know, Stowe is advertising for an assistant director and guess what? Makes more than our director. So we've got to keep up, I think. Um, and I also, just my experience as someone who's borrowed a bunch of books already, it's a pretty awesome library, really welcoming environment when you go there. Um, and that's really where the action is in the payroll numbers. If you look down, um, there's nothing else huge. In fact, there's a reduction to the MBOF, the Municipal Building Operations Fund, and that's because the debt is down a little bit and some expenses are down a little bit. Um, but really, um, there's some increase, some overall increase in spending, and a part of it is that there's less money to carry over. Um, you know, but in general, I think it's a pretty good defensible budget. Uh, the library also has um, its own investment fund, its own endowment in essence, and that's in excess of a half million dollars. Um, so every and there's and there's there's that endowment and then there's a secondary. Generate revenue for the budget up on the yeah. bottom line at the top there. The, the, the trust fund. Trust fund thirty thousand. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the library has some resources for the future. So they're in a pretty good financial position overall. So why does the five uh, percent raise generate nine point nine percent increase? Because in addition to that, there's the staff person that they're adding hours to. So that that's what gets you there overall. I don't know if there were other raises during the course of 2022 that were not budgeted. Um, no, I mean make a we did make a slight adjustment in the, uh, for everybody at one point. So um, and they and they had a similar situation in that their 2022 budget and their actual is pretty much spot on. Yeah, they had some vacancies, but because it was raised mid-year, yeah. um, you know, it kind of Build paid off that vacancy. Yeah. yeah, and the other piece they're seeing, which is great, is, and I think this is a bit of a statewide trend, is that um, libraries have gotten more popular of late, mm -hmm. which is a great thing, that their, their memberships are up. Um, and you see that even in the, um, the non-resident fees, uh, which are up, and that's just more people from out of town paying their dues. There's one kind of wild card we have, and right now, well, the person they just hired uh, just left, right? They How just many hours a week was that? Not very many. Was, okay. So in the library, um, there are three people that are eligible for health insurance, but only one pays, which, you know, so that that's a nominal amount of money. But in the past, we've had one of those people who didn't take it. They leave the year when you hire a new person and they do take it. So, yeah. you know, that line is, uh, it's kind of a volatile line. 
the three people that are in those positions right now, I think are pretty solidly in there, unless there's some major family event. I don't see any of them leaving, but that is a little bit of a tricky line from time to time. Yeah, and the other thing I see working in this building, um, there's just a lot of vibrancy in there. There's all sorts of activities in the evening, which is great to see. And then they have um, they have a program um, for teenagers, and they actually get a fair number of teenagers in here a lot of days after school, which astounds me that that's a demographic mm -hmm. that strikes me as really tough to get into a library. So I, I think they're doing good work. Is there any particular reason for uh, dropping the uh, projected uh, non resident fees in uh, uh, 2022 uh, actuals? Just want to be a little conservative on the revenue side. And that's it for the for the library budget. Unless there's any questions. So the tentative plan for Monday is that. I will have in front of you the, the few dangling participles. Um, we haven't seen the cemetery, uh, which is not a huge number. Um, I think the cemetery is $15,000 in property taxes That's going into it. And then we haven't talked about the health budget, oh, which. No way to the oh, thanks. Oh, which is. Still yummy on the other side. Three to Oh, sorry. Um, let me just finish the thought real yeah, quick. So there's there's the health budget, which would which had that community service officer in this current year, but those are fairly minimal. And then I'll present to you um, any significant items that have had to sort of get tweaked as we've gone on and more new information, which is not really much at all. And then we'll have the tax rate and and hopefully, um, and then the review of the um, all the small things that go in the warning the the thousand dollars here, thousand dollars there. Um, we haven't heard any new information from anyone, except in the senior center, uh, except in the rotary. Is that closed now? Any, uh, any new requests? Uh... I've not heard anything new. I I, I do think that their twenty five thousand dollars for the commercial kitchen is vastly understated. Just my opinion, but I don't think I can remodel my kitchen for twenty five thousand dollars. So. It, Commercial kitchen equipment, I think, is yes. at least double that. Is my guess. I don't. You might have a better opinion. Well, speaking of that, um, I did touch base with a friend of mine who's probably one of the most qualified contractors on this area. He built most of the houses in the last subdivision I had up on Shaw Mansion. Uh, asked him if he had any interest in. Uh, Pursuing that uh, estimate for that for the senior center, and he said he would be willing to do it. Good. Uh, so he's supposed to be giving me his contact information for the people that would supply the kitchen itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, in fact, I'm going to send him a text here at some point. Uh, I haven't heard from the guy. Maybe he's already contacted him, but supposed to be get back in touch with me so that I can hook them up and go forward with okay. at least some type of an estimate for that. Okay. So between Monday's meeting, we'll have, in essence, we'll pull it all together. Yeah. And then hopefully we'll finish Monday. The goal will be to finish it. And and based on that, we'll, we'll be able to write the warning. So on the 30th, if all goes well, you won't, you'll be proving the warning and hopefully not doing a whole lot of other work. Okay. So are we uh, are you thinking of budgeting anything for the uh, ice center um, projected plans? Uh, they have not made a request. Um, what, the, well, well, you're talking about when the sub, yeah, you know, starting. Oh, to sorry. Recreation, start, the recreation no, stuff. Not yet. Um, I think we're we're it's not quite done. Uh -huh. so and, the, uh, and we and we had yeah. some new information today that impacts the road. Um, just, to counter, or just to say differently, one thing I didn't mention to Tom, but 
and while I'm not, I want to see some of the projects move forward, is that we do we did approve transfers to the recreation CIP, which obviously is full of recreation projects. But in the past, there is some funding sources for specifically outdoor recreation projects, which we've applied for them not unsuccessfully. But we've been able to say we have money, you know, in the rec CIP that could improve. You know, if you're going to spend it anything on something, we consider that. And, and some of the some of the conceptual plans, in es in essence, have us building fields, and that doesn't strike me as something that's going to require a ton of money. But I appreciate Roger's point about that confusion. You know, it's not just I guess that's I pushed on me. It's our reason I got in the rec CIP is where I got it, like parking mm -hmm. and service fees. But um, fortunately, that was fully unintentional. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I and I'll I'll have that for everyone at the next meeting. But, okay. um, and that and part of that is because EFOD is meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um and then I, I guess I think we're on to Karen's item if we're, mm -hmm. if we're ready. What's up? What's the total budget for the town? Yeah, school to that could come up with this more Six point seven left. Six point seven last year, I think. So I was gonna say about six So, um, the budget is about, people want to know, last year was about 6.7. Nailed it. Nailed it. Look at that. And the property taxes were about 4.1, 4.1. Was Karen waiting? She she's on she's uh well, unmuted. Are you waiting for me? I'm sorry. No, we weren't waiting. Now we are now ready for you. Okay. Um, I would like to ask the board if you would be willing to consider placing an article on the warning at this year's town meeting to change the term for town clerk and treasurer from a one-year term to a three-year term. So the, the voters would be asked to change it this the year, year, year for the following year. For the following. This year did yes for the following. Right. So she's running. One she's year. running she's one year this year, and then the voters would approve a three-year term for the following year. Oh, the I I don't think the entire time Carla was here, was there any ever anybody that proposed it? No, wanted it. that position. Anybody that ran against her? Yeah. No. <laughs> And Mike has his hand raised. Mike, I'm going to call you. <laughs> and put, so you'll be on speakerphone, Mike. This works better because after, after the last phone call, I almost lost all audio. So let's hope that doesn't happen again. <laughs> uh, very much in favor. I know I've spoken to Aaron about this this week. And I think it's just it's just something that we have always done. It's been a one-year term. It just, you know, it takes the burden off the town clerk to get voter signatures. And I think the reason why it's always been a one-year term is if, if the town clerk is not doing a good job, they're going to um you know, it gives a chance to vote that person out. You know, I have, I have total confidence in, in Karen, and I think that, uh, you know, if she not been doing the job, you know, the job properly, 
you know, that's up to the select board to basically, you know, look to terminate our agreement with our you know, I don't think it has any other something that's positive for Karen not having to get signatures for the year. It's in three years. Um, yeah, I guess so. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Mike. Thanks, Mike. Uh, any other discussion or question? Otherwise, we can uh, entertain a motion. Yeah, I, I would support uh, Karen's request. That's a motion. Is that a motion to? <laughs> yes, I would move that we accept Karen's request. I'll second. Any further discussion? I guess I'll argue that I'm very good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> So, good luck. We think. <laughs> we think. So. Um, are we are you entertaining? I clarify for the Bob. We do need to revisit this town meeting discussion. I've already had some yep. thoughts and had the conversation out loud. Uh, you know, so where we're putting the town street money to clarify. Yes, that's the next meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Drive careful. Thank you. Get well, Mike.